extremely intelligent, um, very analytical um, about the setup and what he feels in the car. Just the way he commands himself, he's, he's very, very articulate, he's, he seems very intelligent. Robotic is something that I've always said about Zach. Um, and that's not in a, I don't mean that in a cold way, I mean that in a, a focused way. He's, he's very, very robotic. He's able to take on board some information and just repeat, repeat, repeat. Championship win has been a long time coming for Zach. Me starting in Ginetta's, um, I, it's very rare he was off the podium, so he, he definitely deserved to be at the front end of the Ginetta Championship. Um, but, you know, it, it, it didn't work out and then moved into Formula 4 and that was obviously a, a gut-wrenching championship. It was really, really close between his, his competitor um, and it came all the way down to literally the red flag at the last race at, at Brands Hatch. So, um, I feel like he probably deserved that one, but uh, it didn't happen. So. Zach's season so far has gone well. Um, you can't really knock him. He's not made many mistakes. He's not really put a foot wrong. We went into the season with high expectations. We knew he'd be there or thereabouts. However, we we knew it was gonna, wasn't going to be easy. We're going to have to work really hard with the team um, and, and just take each round as it comes. And that's how Zach works and that's how he likes to work um, to reduce the pressure on himself um, throughout an event. Uh, and it worked well. He's been fast from race one. He's been super consistent, which I knew he would be. Um, he's, he's led the setup um, direction of the team uh, with Anthony, his race engineer, and the whole package has been very, very good. Alton Park started off strong in testing. We were happy with where we were with the pace. Um, we, we, we came there with the expectation of coming away with the championship. That was our focus. Um, but equally to do that, you need to be fast. You need to put it on pole. You need to win races and get as many points as you can. So we, you know, the, the, the focus was on doing everything we could to win that championship that weekend. Um, it started off very well, very, very fast. Zach doing his usual robotic-like pinpoint perfection every single corner. Um, so we know what we're working with. Uh, qualifying went very, very well. One set of tires straight off, straight out of the blocks. I mean, he was six tenths faster than anyone else the majority of the session. Um, and then going into the race, yeah, just domination in the first race. Great start managed the first half of the race, just kept them at bay, and then once their tyres dropped off, he just dropped them. Continues to lead the championship, five wins now this year. Zach O'Sullivan! Yeah. 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 The drivers will self-serve with their champagne. Pressure early on the race, yeah. probably behind, and it's all the high tyre pressures. Yeah. Sunday was a real strange one. Um, a strange one for me as well, and I think it was a strange one for everyone, but it, it actually stems from the Saturday because we had such a good Saturday. We had a double pole, so we, we, you know, we, we had a double pole. We won um, the first race and we started pole for the first race on Sunday. And really all Zach needed to do was finish in the top three um, and then finish race three and likelihood is it would have been wrapped up. It didn't go to plan. Um, you could feel that there was, there, was, there was something in the air for me on Sunday. We, we, we knew what we had to do and we all had the confidence that it was doable and Zach knew what he had to do and he knew it was possible. But there was just something that, for me personally, walking to watch the start of that race, I felt that there was something, just something that was gonna happen. But, you know, um, again, Zach got, Zach got a good start. Um, we were a little bit tame uh, with the, our, our Right, nearest rival who wasn't involved in the championship and he went around the outside of us so we came out of turn one in p2 and zach wanted to win being the racing driver that he is so um he bided his time and he, he did the right things and then as the, the driver ahead started to drop off we started getting closer and closer and there was an opportunity for an overtake goes around the outside you know doesn't work out we get podded off it's it is what it is that's racing um uh but you know i don't I don't blame Zach for what he did because any racer, any real racer would have done it. Um, so yeah, uh, that kind of put a bit of a bad taste on the on the race too and just made it a little bit harder to get that championship done. But in fairness, Zach was frustrated for about five minutes. We had a good chat, turned it around, goes out for race three 
and just you know performs like a in my opinion a real champion does he you know whipped through the paddock uh, whipped through the through the grid in poor conditions poor visibility and just just overtook everyone in sight you know it was it was it was a spectacle really and it shows why he should be the champion of the gb3 championship this year Obviously heading into Autumn Park, I had a pretty relaxed attitude. Uh, in some ways I could take risks, uh, such a big championship lead, uh, and obviously yeah, the possibility of winning the championship um, didn't quite turn out. I kind of half won the championship. Um, ironically, by taking a risk in race two, I probably didn't need to take. Uh, had a small incident uh, and a DNF, but then I think I recovered well in race three, um, and yeah, nearly finished the title. So uh, a bit of an odd, odd way to end the weekend. The point system for the GB3 Championship is slightly unusual in that um, for the first two races, there's 35 points on offer for a win, uh, and that's per race. For race three, the reverse grid, however, it changes slightly because it's a reverse grid, so there are less points available for the, the actual wins, 20, um, but then additional points are offered for overtaking or moving up places from your starting position. So depending on how many cars there are on the, on the grid, there are more points available. So on a standard weekend, let's say there's about 18, 19 cars, something like that, it means that there's, in the third race, there are 18 points of position to gain because you start 19th and potentially finish first. So that gives you an extra 18 points. Um, now, obviously, on uh, some weekends, there are more cars than others, which means that more points are available. So we couldn't crown Zach as the champion at Alton Park because even though he's within a certain points bracket, um, we didn't know, and you never do know, how many cars are going to enter a race weekend until we actually see the entry list. And even then, we still don't know because the entries do close for late entries on a Friday evening. Um, so again, the, vary, the entry list can vary anywhere between 17 and this weekend, for example, we're expecting at least 21 cars. Um, so it's just a case of waiting to see how many cars enter because the more cars that enter, the more points available. Um, obviously, we can't crown Zach as the, the champion until a race one is completed just to various uh, technical uh, issues and regulation things. For example, um, points can be deducted, for example, if anything happens on track. Um, so to avoid that possibility, once he completes race one successfully without incident uh, and scores points, he will be the champion after that and we can all celebrate because I think he deserves it. When um, we started this year, to be honest, I was extremely confident um, that, um, that Zach could fight and win the championship. Um, I saw what he did in F4. Um, really, morally, he was the champion that year. The car broke down a couple of times, which cost him a few points. And then, of course, we got uh, the unfortunate events of Brands Hatch, where we won, but still didn't win. Um, so I was, um, you know, having paid great attention to Zach, um, I saw his massive potential. And he's done actually everything and more than I expected this season. I've been really impressed with Zach this year because he is one of the youngest drivers on the grid coming straight out of F4. He's only raced in a single seaters for a single season, but his speed's been brilliant. Um, he has won more races than anybody else this year. And the way he has uh, commanded himself in, in and out of the car, he reminds me very much of George Russell, who he worked with in, in 2014. He's got that sort of personality, he's got that sort of style behind the wheel. And um, I have every confidence that when he goes on to the future championships, he'll do uh, very well, just like George did. I would also say very, very calm. Like when you deal with someone like Zach, you wouldn't want to play poker against him. Let me put it that way. It's almost like things just don't phase him. You know, when we when that happened, that the the, the incident happened in race two at Alton Park, he he just. He was frustrated for about three minutes and we had a conversation and it was like clap our hands wipe our hands with it move on to the next one let's go and that is one of zach's great strengths because under pressure he will deliver always i wouldn't want to race against him no. You reckon? How long do you reckon? Swap heavily for Javier. James and Javier, can you two switch seats? No, I'm free. Who threw that idea?
practice on Thursday and Friday. We came into qualifying on Saturday morning. Ended pretty well uh, with pole for race one and P3 for race two. I mean, I've noticed over, well, over the last few rounds, Zach's fan base is really growing. Um, the hype around him, people are noticing, um, people are talking about him on, online, but not only that, even at the tracks, now that they're allowed spectators, which is fantastic to see again, you're seeing Zach's merchandise around, you know, uh, kids and, and, and parents wanting to get signatures on his hats and his merchandise, which is, which is insane for Zach and a, and a great opportunity to, for him to kind of get used to that um, at such a young age of 16. Race one went to plan, likes to flag victory and a perfect way to wrap up the championship. <laughs> It was a really wet race in race two. Started from P3 on the grid and made good progress up until the end of lap one and was leading and could stretch the gap from there. And yes, yeah, so another perfect result. I started at the back for race three. Main aims were to finish as high as possible and also stay out of trouble. Um, I did this by gaining 13 places and finished eighth, which is a pretty positive way to the end of the season. I think Zach's got a fantastic future ahead of him. If he can keep this, uh, the same work ethic, um, and we have to remember, you know, he's, he's, he's 16 years old, um, and he's really at the very beginning of his car racing career, and um, what he's achieved already is massive. If he can just keep this momentum going, um, really, I, I would say that it, within two or three years, he'll, he'll be ready, um, you know, potentially for Formula One or any other form of professional motor racing. Obviously, it's tricky, Formula One, it's uh, uh, very expensive and hard to be in the right place at the right time. But um, if, if you know if things are done on merit alone, um, Zach will be ready for the, you know, the big step in a few years' time. Has he got a future? Absolutely. He's, he's, he's got everything he needs. 
Um, and is he capable of going all the way? I believe he has has the capability and I believe he's got the drive for it as well and the focus. Um, he's got the work ethic. So other than that, you can't really say if he's going to get there because there's so many variables. But in terms of him deserving to be there, 100%.